Invite your friends to join us right now. We're going to be dealing with chasing after God for encounters. We, our desire in life is to go after Him, to chase after Him, to, to experience all that He has in stock for us to experience in our lives. So invite someone to join us right now as we go right into the teaching of the Word of God. I believe your life will be transformed. I believe your life will be will be impacted by the Word of God today. So why don't you invite someone to join us right now let us pray father we thank you once again we've come again to you because we believe you have something for us as always we've come to worship you've come to to just give you all adoration and to hear your word speak to us by your spirit and let our lives be transformed in jesus name amen and amen thanks again for logging on for being a part of this why don't you click on the share button right now just invite your friends to join us don't wait until the end of the service. You can just do it right now. Click on that share button. Let your friends join us now. That's important you do that because what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. There will be somebody right now that will be, will be glad to hear the word of God taught, spoken to their lives this day. Now we are dealing with chasing after God for encounters. God always wants us to come after him. Bible tells us that God is a hiding God, which is very interesting because we think it's very obvious that God is there, he's there but he's a hiding God. That means it, it, it creates such a desire for us to chase after him. And we said yesterday that, that they are pre preparing to have encounters with God. There are things that, there are stages that you must go through. I mean, there is no two ways about it. You know, God is a God of protocol. God is a God that has order. You know, God is not partial. Whatever he does for one, he will do for the other. So we read the scripture yesterday in the book of First King, I believe we read yesterday, uh, Second King chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 14. And we mentioned about uh, the prophet going to a place called Gilgal, and from Gilgal they have to get to a place called Bethel, and from Bethel to Jericho, and from Jericho to Jordan. See, but what in the world is he talking about? Yes, these are names of places in the scripture that have great significance for you as a New Testament believer. Now, the place called Gilgal is a place of of dying to self. If you're going to have an encounter with God, you have to die to self. You have to be crucified with the Lord. No longer you that live it, but Christ that live it in you. And the life you now live, you live by the faith of the Son of God who died for you. So what I was saying, you have to go to Gilgal. What does Gilgal represent? Rolling away, a place of surrender, a place where you die, a place you are no longer you that live, but Christ lives in you, a place where you die to the flesh, a place where destruction is eliminated, a place where you no longer exist. And we said yesterday, conclusion, Gilgal, as you get past Gilgal, when you engage your spirit man through prayer and fasting. That's right. It is not an Old Testament phenomenon. It's also a New Testament lifestyle of prayer and fasting. When you wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. So you get to Gilgal because without getting to Rai Kalako Sandi Kalakondayabaya, Eli Orikatamande, without getting to Gilgal, you will not go to the next phase. You will never get to experience. I see increase for somebody right now. I just received a word in the spirit that somebody's about to receive increase. I mean increase in that business deal. Increase in that business venture. Increase has come. Receive it. Grab it. Increase has come right now for you in the name of Jesus. So that place called Gilga is a place where you die to self. So you have to go through that through prayer and fasting. You have to get to the place of prayer and fasting. Remember, prayer and fasting is not something of old. It is some. It is a phenomenon that is important for a New Testament believer as well, where you pray and you fast and you wait upon the Lord. You have encounters with God, and that means you, you engage your spirit. You get in the realm of the spirit. Nothing happens in this physical realm until first happens in the realm of the spirit. And the way to engage your spirit in the realm of the spirit is through prayer and fasting now the other place that we that we read yesterday in second king chapter second kings was a place called bethel now bethel is the next place of god dealing with us as we desire to have 
is encounters. When, when you desire to have God's encounter, you desire to have encounters with God, he deals with you the place of Bethel. Now, Bethel is important. Bethel is known as the house of God. Bethel speaks about a dwelling in God. When you think of Bethel, you think about standing in the presence of God. When we talk about Bethel, you are referring to God's presence. That means to have an encounter with God, you have to have a desire for the presence of God. There have to be a desire in there, of course. Remember this very, 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 very importantly, that the desire is put in there by God, but you have to go after it. You, you know, God prompts a desire in your heart to go after him. You have to chase after God. You have to be a God chaser, chasing after his presence, desiring to have his presence in your life, desiring to walk and to live in his presence, because in his presence, you receive encounter. You can only get encounters in the presence of God. Encounters does not come outside of his presence. Encounters only manifest in his presence. That's why I love First Kings chapter 17, verse 1, when Elijah, you know, Elijah would say that, 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 that he is one who stands in God's presence. Elijah knows that he always stands in God's presence. And being in God's presence is a matter of consciousness. It is a consciousness that is birthed in your spirit by the pull of God towards him to you. So God is reaching to your heart to chase after him, to chase after him. I love what Elijah said in 1 Kings 18 verse 15. He said, and Elijah said again, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. So Elijah, I am always standing in the presence of God. Do you want more of God and anything else in this world? For you to have encounters with God, you have to want more of God than anything else in this world. You have to desire more of God than anything else in your life. God has to be priority in your life. You have to have the hunger for the presence of God, not just for his presence, in your life, boy, for his presence. Because in his presence, everything you need is there. In his presence is his present. In his presence are his presence. You cannot receive his presence if you don't get to his presence. In the face of the Lord, everything you need is there. The Bible says in his presence, there are pleasure forevermore. What do you really want from the Lord but anything else? How hungry are you for God? Are you hungry for more of his presence? Or of his presence in your life. If God desires to take you on a journey of intimacy with him, a journey of higher revelation of his person and his presence in our life, when you have a desire for God, when you have a heart longing after God, like David said, you have a heart longing after God because God puts a hunger in you and you take advantage of that hunger and you are chasing after God. There's somebody watching right now. Actually, I hope you're watching right now. Because you as uh, God has God is putting a prompting in your spirit, a prompting in your heart to go after him. You know, it appears as though nothing else matters in your life. And that's right. We all have been there. I have been there myself. It is not uh, it is not an abnormality. You are just blessed that God has handpicked you to have his desire be your your soul desire. I know. You may not feel like going to work anymore. You may not feel like doing any other thing but just God. And that is okay. Why? Because God is the one that put that desire in you. And please, do not take it for granted. Because there are so many that are desiring to have exactly what you have. Desiring to receive. To desiring to just experience that pull of God. But they never have it. So when God chooses you and put a hunger in you, you should be grateful to God. You should go after it. Go after it. Because it is God that places there. You know, you may not have a desire to work anymore. Desire to do anything anymore. Or you just want is God and God and God. He placed in there. He did. Go after it. 
Go after it. It doesn't mean you quit your job. It doesn't mean you quit doing what you're supposed to do. But it just means that you pursue God with everything you've got. When you begin to pursue God like that, you're going to have encounters upon encounters with God that only your mind cannot even fathom in. Encounters that you never expect to have. Encounters and dreams and visions and things taking place in your life. You begin to experience the scripture that says that seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things that others are choosing to get shall be added unto you. Are you hungry for God? Because to have that God encounter, you have to chase after him. You have to go after his presence. You have to go after his presence. But remember I told you earlier on, John 6, 44a, Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So, what is happening to some of you right now is that God is drawing you. God is drawing you to him. God is drawing you to have an encounter, more encounters with him. And when that happens, go after it. Go after it. There are people who are just wanting that to happen in your life. So you cannot manufacture it. You cannot force it. You cannot just make it happen by yourself. God draws you. John 6, 44a. God draws you to himself. He draws you. And when he does that, you take advantage of that drawing of God. And you capitalize on that season. Because that season is a season where you can receive everything God has for you for that moment. And he can take you to the next season. You know, we hunger for him because he gave us the appetite. You hunger for God because God gave you the appetite. We thirst for him because he made us to be thirsty for him. We feel drawn to him because he is drawing us to himself. He does not want you to go through life without his presence in your life. So chasing after God and pursuing after God would mean pursuing after his presence. If you're going to have an encounter with God, you have to chase, you have to pursue after his presence. The desire to chase after God originates with God, but the outworking of that desire is our chasing heart after him. I think I must say that again, that the desire to chase after God originates with God, but the outworking of that desire is our chasing heart after him. I love what the Bible tells us in Psalm 42 verse 1. As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. Now that's David. How are you responding to the thirst that God has placed in your heart? How are you responding to the thirst, to the hunger that God is placing in your heart? Are you responding negatively? The devil may tell you it is difficult to go after God, but no, it's not difficult. God has already put that desire in your heart and you must respond by pursuing after him. You are watching this right now because God has put a desire in your heart to receive more encounters with him. Go after him. Go after him. Don't log off. Just stay tuned right now. Stay tuned. I know you might be drawn to some other things faith right now, but just stay connected to this message. I love what it says in Psalm 63 verse 8. The psalmist says, my soul follows hard after thee. Thy right hand uphold me, oh my goodness. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek you, David said. My soul thirsted for thee. That is Psalm 63 from verse 1 to verse 8. My soul thirst after thee. My flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Oh my God. Now this is a man after God's old heart. His heart chasing after God. His consciousness is on God. His, uh, his consciousness is focused on God. He's constantly thinking on the things of God. Look at what David said. My soul, oh God, said, my soul thirst for thee. My flesh longed for thee, not for food, for him. That's right. Verse 2, to see the power and thy glory, so I have seen in thy sanctuary. So you can only see the power and the glory of God when 
you chase after him. You can only have an encounter with God when you go after God. The power, the anointing, the glory, the presence. You can only experience the power of God in such a vast magnitude when you chase after him, when you go hard after him. Let others laugh at you. Don't worry about what others are saying. They might think you've lost your mind. They might think you are full of it. They might think what's wrong with you. That's okay. You know what you want. You want to see more of his power, more of his glory, and you want to have an encounter with him. And an encounter with God is worth a lifetime experience. Look at verse 3. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I'll lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Verses, when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou art been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, thy right hand upholded me. I love this, man. I love to do this. And I want to just tell you, you can chase after God even. I love because this often happens with me. He said, well, I, I, when I remember thee upon my bed, I mean, you can be just laying down there and you're just focusing on the Lord. You don't have to think about anything else, but just focus on the Lord, even for the first one hour of getting up. Just focus on Him. When, you're, when you are awake, think about Him. Before you go to bed, meditate on Him. When you wake up, meditate on Him. What Whatever you are doing, let God just permeate your mind, your consciousness. Let it be all about God. I look at a Mandela. When it be all about God, you begin to have encounters, encounters that will bring you divine health, encounters that will generate prosperity in your life, encounters that will give you the ability to create wealth. That's right. Encounters that will push the devil away from you, encounters that will register your name in the realm of the spirit, encounters where you are recognized and respected in the spirit realm, Kali Kadamayila. That is not meant just for the apostle, it's also for you. Where you are known in the realm of the spirit. Where the devil would say, no, I know him. You know, remember the, remember the seven sons of Skiver? He said, you know, Paul I know, but who are you? Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? I want, you, you want the devil to know that you are important personality in the realm of the spirit through engaging in fasting and engaging in pursuing after God's presence, which represents Bethel. Bethel is the house of God. Think about Moses. Remember Moses? Moses said that he wants God to show him his presence. You know, Moses said, if your presence don't go with me, I'm not going anywhere. Chapter 23 of Exodus, verse 15 to verse 16. The good thing right now, you don't have to pray for his presence to go with you. Remember this revelation. Get it right, get it right, get it right. Say with me, his presence is with me. Say it one more time. And say it, his presence is with me. His presence is in me. Just say it, say it, say it like you believe it. His presence, yes, is in you and is with you. So, what Moses prayed, I will not go unto your presence, go with me. That is not a prayer. What you do right now is chasing after God is having the consciousness of his presence in you and with you, in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit, in your thinking. Let the consciousness of his presence consume you in the reality of life. Let that be your life. Let you constantly be thinking about his presence. You are not praying to, to, to let him come. No, he's already with you. It's already in you. You are a carrier of his presence. You are a carrier. You are a carrier of God's presence. It is what is lacking in most of us is the consciousness of the reality that we carry his presence that brings about the manifestation of all the goodies that you desire in your life. It is a consciousness of what you carry that brings about what you need in your life. Now, how hard are you chasing after God? Chasing after God cannot be passive. It must be aggressive. That is it. Psalm 63 verse 8. David said, My soul followed a heart after thee. 
Very open. So it must be aggressive. The same search for God aggressively. The intensity of your search is important. When you chase after God, you have more revelation of Him that you never had. When you chase after God, you will have more revelation of God that you never had. We desire to be in His house, in His presence, all the time. That's why we are creating an atmosphere for you. We create atmosphere for His presence. Well, come now, to expect to receive from God. Don't take it for granted. What well, the Lord, you might see me online all the time, but what God has in stock for you, you can go after it. I see you receiving a new level, a new dimension of God's move in your life. I see God touching you. I see you healing the sick. I see God moving in your life. I see you receiving the open door to that new dimension of your living. I see things happening. I see promotion. That's right. I see sicknesses vanquishing. I see prosperity chasing after you. That's right. I love what Jeremiah said. And you shall seek me and you would find me when you search me, when you search Search for me with all your heart. Chapter 29 of verse 13 of Jeremiah. When you search for God with all your heart, you would find him. To experience God, you have to chase after him. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. But chasing after God is a lifelong pursuit. It, it is a lifelong pursuit and chasing after God's heart. You will never attain the place of complete satisfaction in your pursuit of God and in His presence. Never. Whenever you get satisfied with it and you are complacent and you don't chase after Him no more, there is, a miss, there is something missing. You have to constantly chase after God. And I love what Paul said in Philippians 3 verse 12, not that I've already attained, neither I'm already perfect, but I follow after if I may apprehend that for some that which are required. So he said, I can't know myself as already apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind me and reaching forth to the things that are before, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. It is the desire of you to chase after God with all of your heart. God wants you to chase after him. Man, I'm really out of time, but listen, man, you got to chase after him. I want to pray for you right now. I decree God's favor upon your life. I just decree in the name of Jesus that God will put a hunger in your spirit, a hunger in your heart to chase after him. And I will never take it for granted after today. Lord, I pray I release that hunger, Lord, from you to them. I decree now there will be a thirst for you. There will be a hunger for the more of you, Lord. I thank you because, Lord, as they're going past Gilga and now they're in Bethel, help us, oh God, to get to Jericho and Jordan even tomorrow and take us to the place where you want us to be. Father, I speak blessing upon your people, wherever they're watching this from, all over the world. I decree blessing upon them right now healing prosperity to begin to overflow them and let your presence overshadow them and let the consciousness of your presence be a reality in their life in the name of jesus thanks again for being a part of the broadcast and i hope to, to see you again tomorrow as we as we continue completing this this series remember this you have been destined to win and there is nothing that we can do about it keep on walking by faith and not by sight your victory is already guaranteed in Jesus' name, amen.